Hello everybody, welcome to a new episode. This is Ashraf Sharif and you are watching the Airport Engineering Channel. In this episode, we will be talking about the AGL system architecture. A typical AGL system architecture will comprise of three main parts. The first part is the AGL circuit and pattern, which actually provide the visual guidance to the pilot based on the four Cs. The second part is the AGL substations, while the third part is the AGL uh, or airfield uh, lighting, control, and monitoring system, ALCMS. Those three parts may change based on the airfield category or the feeding concept. For instance, the solar-based AGL units won't have AGL circuitry and surely uh, any AGL substations. Moreover, the whole concept or the whole remote control system will be totally different. However, it worth to say that AGL uh, or the solar-based AGL system is the still developing and it cannot be used as a sole source of visual guidance. The IK regulations pertaining to the AGL systems are stipulated in three documents. The first document is the Airdrome Design Manual, Annex 14. The second document is the Visual Aids Design Manual, uh, document 9157, part 4, while the third document is the Electrical System Design Manual, part 5, under the same document, document 9157. IQ regulations are classified in two types. The first one, wherever the word shall is used, the following clause is considered as a mandatory requirement, while wherever the word should is used, the following clause considered as a recommendation. The AGL systems have different requirements based on the airfield category. Each airfield category shall have a number of requirements and recommendations that need to be reflected on the AGL circuits, the AGL substations, and the AGL remote control system. As the category of an airfield change, the four C's parameters of the same airfield may change. For example, the configuration. There are many possible changes under the configuration. The first one could be the need to have a specific AGL circuits or not, like the runway center line. In the precision approach category one, the runway center line is not a requirement. While the same airfield, if is needed to be upgraded to a higher category, then the runway center line becomes a requirement. Another example is the pattern of an existing system, like the approach light. The approach light is a requirement in the precision approach uh, category one. However, the same system will have a different layout and pattern when compared to uh, precision approach category two. The third possible change under configuration is the spacing of AGL light, like the taxiway center line. In category one, or CAT one, the spacing between each light should not exceed 30 meters. While for higher categories, this spacing should be reduced. It should be 15 meters, for instance, when you uh, aim to have a category two airfield. The second C, which is the color, it may change as well based on the category change of an airfield. As we said, the runway center line is not required in CAT 1. When it is introduced in CAT 2, you will start seeing red light in the center line. The third possible change is the candela. As the category increase, the need to have high intensity light increase as well. The fourth possible change 
is the coverage like what happened in the approach light as the layout change the aiming and the calibration of the lights may change in addition to the possible changes to the forces parameters as the airfield category change there will be some changes in the AGL substations as well each category has a maximum allowable switching over time which should not be exceeded in case of power failure those changes aims to provide a secondary power supply that will reduce the switching over time in case of a main power failure so as not to exceed this maximum allowable switching over time there are five main AGL patterns the first one is the approach lighting system the second one is the runway lighting system the third one is the taxiway lighting system the fourth one is the apron lighting system and the last one is guidance signs under the first pattern which is the approach lighting system some possible uh, uh, systems can be provided based on the uh, airfield category the first one is the reels which is the runway end identification lighting system this system basically is a pair of uh, flashing lights located at the beginning of the uh, uh, runway aligned with the threshold uh, typically this system is provided uh, for non-instrument uh, airfield the second system is the simple approach uh, this is provided for uh, non-instrument uh, airfield or non-precision approach uh, airfield uh, then you may have precision approach cat 1 precision approach cat 2 precision approach cat 3 and uh, the pathy which is the precision approach path indicator and the rotating beacon under the second uh, pattern which is the runway uh, lighting it starts with the threshold light um, this uh, 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 light identify the beginning of the runway from the name threshold it gives the exact uh, beginning of the runway then it followed by the touchdown zone which define to the pilot uh, the area or the safe area where he should aim to land those lights the touchdown zone light extend up to 900 meters of the first uh, part of the uh, runway then uh, the runway edge light comes which is uh, uh, two rows of uh, parallel lights define the runway boundary the runway edge uh, then you may have the runway center line which is uh, a line uh, that uh, extended from the beginning of the runway exactly from the threshold till the runway end this light defines the center line of uh, a runway another lighting uh, system is the runway end light which defines the runway end also you may have uh, uh, the retail which is the rapid exit identification lighting it gives a uh, 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 in identification uh, or indication to the pilot uh, regarding how uh, far is uh, the, the rapid exit another possible light is the runway guard light which is a pair of alternatively flashing lights aligned with the runway top bar lights and the last system is the runway lead in light which is an extension of the taxiway center line uh, lighting extended from the runway stop bar into the runway itself as we said the third uh, uh, pattern is uh, the taxiway uh, uh, lighting we have uh, four uh, main uh, lighting systems under this uh, pattern which is uh, the taxiway center line lighting the taxiway edge lighting the intermediate holding position lights and the taxiway stop bar lights the fourth uh, pattern is the apron lighting under that uh, pattern we have two uh, 
uh, uh, type of lighting, which is the apron perimeter lighting and the uh, aircraft stand maneuvering uh, 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 guidance lights. The last AGL pattern is the guidance signs. Under this pattern, we have two types of signs. The first one is the information guidance signs, while the second one is the mandatory guidance signs. In our discussion about the AGL circuits, we will be talking about the AGL primary circuits and the AGL secondary circuits and the AGL pit fit out. This basically uh, uh, where the shallow base uh, type is used. Also, we will be talking about uh, the counterpoise uh, system and the earthing system in addition to the AGL infrastructure. The second part of AGL architecture is the AGL substations. Talking about the AGL substations will be mainly regarding the uh, uh, main power source, how this can be designed, what are the requirements of this power source, how the distribution boards are uh, chosen, and how the redundancy can be assured. The secondary power supply as well, we need to discuss uh, about the secondary power supply uh, 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 what are the requirement of this secondary power supply because this how uh, the, the, the maximum allowable switching over time can be achieved which is a main requirement for any uh, airfield category. The last component that we will be talking about meanwhile we are discussing the AGL substations is the constant current regulators, the CCRs. By this episode we have completed the AGL introduction and we have set a roadmap uh, for the coming episodes and the topics of the coming episode. Because in the coming episode, we will be taking each system separately and we will be talking about each system thoroughly, starting from uh, the pattern requirement, uh, 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 the design requirement, the installation uh, methodology, and finally, the maintenance methodology and requirements. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and share and to subscribe to the channel. And it will be wonderful if you like our Facebook page as well, so as to keep in pace with the coming episodes and the daily digest that we are posting uh, from time to time. Thank you and see you next week.